Good morning, friends, wherever you are. And I am Ben Ochart, and this is uh, Cichlids and Coffee. And I welcome you, and uh, thank you for sitting in. I see we have uh, Brian Rinke. Brian, did I pronounce that right, Brian? Looks like you're first, uh, first on the scene, my friend. So uh, be sure to send me your uh, be sure to send me your mailing address if you would like some some uh, channel stickers. I'll get those over to you. Thank you for being an early bird, my friend. And who else we have? We have uh, Jad or J Dog, J Dog sixty seven. Hello. And uh, hey Zen Ginger, what's up? And uh, Misfit Reptiles and Aquatics. All right. Great name. Hello from Sandusky, Ohio. Our ba hey, our Baglio. Good morning, my friend. And uh, James Green is here as well. And yes, I too, James. Hope everybody is well. And Chevy Fish. Hello, Chevy Fish. Nice to see you again. Hey, Candy. Hey, GP. My wonderful moderators who do a great job uh, keeping the uh, keeping the chats under control. And uh, Cat Sailor, hello Cat Sailor, Remco Camphis, Camphis, good evening from the Netherlands. Wow. Okay, Remco, someday I'm going to visit your country to see the uh, the Northern Lights. It's on my bucket list, and uh, maybe I'll reach out to you before I go. You can give me some tips. And uh, let's see here, who else? Terrible Princess. <laughs> One of my daughters was a terrible princess once, and uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, I'm going to get off the chat now because it can be a bit distracting as I go along. And uh, GP, thank you for the feedback on the uh, video, on the video um, feed. I am gradually tweaking it, and I want to thank all of you who have. Um, helped with things like super chats and things like that. I'm also going to my my, uh, my shout out screen for my wonderful moderators and also all of you who have helped with super chats because that that has helped me to be able to invest in better equipment to be able to get you a better uh, a better stream and also better uh, videos in general. So thank you so much for that. And uh, more people are jumping on. Be sure to share, be sure to share the link to the stream with everyone you know, and uh, let's go ahead and get under underway. Now, don't forget if you're new to the channel, and uh, or even if you're returning and haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that sub button and that bell so that uh, you get notifications and it tells me that you're getting something out of this channel so uh, i think that's pretty cool if you do that thank you so much if you can and uh, let's see here okay hey misael santos am i pronouncing that right misael santos santos means saints thank you so much misael and if you are Spanish, muchas gracias, amigo. Lo, lo muy agradecido. And uh, good tips. Thanks. You are welcome. And uh, that's a lot better than uh, the occasional thumbs down you get before you even start the stream. <laughs> so anyway, so that's the plug for uh, if you're new. And uh, let's go ahead and move into some of the topics here. And... Uh, Thank you so much for that uh, for that super chat. For those of you not familiar, super chats are just ways of uh, throwing a little money at the channel. Uh, I compared it once to uh, like let's say there's a pole dancer and you're never mind. Let's use a different analogy. <laughs> let's talk about what's been going on. How does that sound? So um, there's a um, There are three videos that I released in the last week. I try and get three out all the time. Sometimes I get busy and I can't, and um, but I try and get uh, I, I try and get uh, 
don't worry, Candy, there'll be no pole dancing. <laughs> You'd have to bleach your eyes if there was pole. <laughs> so um, I try and get three videos out, uh, you know, on uh, on a regular basis. And um, this uh, uh, this last week, I was able to get some videos out on stocking on thoughts about light and, and heavy stocking, which was very timely, uh, very timely in light of what happened uh, with me. And uh, because I had to deal with some light and heavy stocking issues and as a possible, as a, as a solution to a problem. And um, I'm already giving away the, uh, the, the outcome or the title of this, of today's live stream is already being given away just by looking behind me here you see that there is a relative amount of peace in this tank. And um, we'll get more into that as we get along. But um, I put a video out on heavy or light stocking. What do you folks like who are on the, on the uh, live stream now? And, and those of you who watch it later when it posts to YouTube, I'd like to hear from you. What, what, what do you prefer? Do you prefer to, to have a heavily stocked tank with a lot going on, a lot of color, a lot of motion? heavy requirements with regards to maintenance, right? You have to do, um, you have to really stay on top of that maintenance, bigger water changes, more frequent water changes, more frequent uh, filter maintenance. I mean, that is the trade-off on having a very heavily stocked, very busy tank. And of course, the plus point is you get that wonderful, you know, activity and color and never a dull moment. And, uh, or do you prefer something a little bit more peaceful? Something maybe a little, a little quieter, a little slower, still color, colorful, still enjoyable, but uh, a little lighter stocked, not requiring uh, so much intense maintenance because uh, it's not going to spiral out of control with a, with, a, with a lot of ammonia all at once or something. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'd love to hear them in the, uh, in the comments for sure. And uh, I also released a video on a trip I took. I, I was uh, down south with my wife. We were celebrating our 35th, 35th anniversary. Seems like yesterday I went to a wedding where she was the maid of honor and I'd never met her before. I caught the garter and we were married three months later and it was like, so if you catch a garter, realize you are, it, you, you, that's it, you're done. It does, it does work. And uh, <laughs> so, and we've been married 35 years. So uh, we had a great time, but I always, uh, she's always sweet and, and allows me to create a detour to a local fish store. And I stopped at a, at a small, you know, a very small family owned business, very compact, but they had a lot of, uh, a, a lot of quality fish and supplies and uh, they really made good use of their space. And I was very happy to visit that shop, uh, Lotus Aquarium in Lawndale, California and a great, a great selection, of, surprisingly, of, of discus, beautiful guppies, and some beautiful betta, some beautiful betta. And, uh, and I really liked the owner. He was very sweet, uh, very welcoming, and, uh, and, and you know, he, he, was, he wasn't like put off that I was there. He, he said, yes, go ahead and film. And as a matter of fact, after I told him uh, what what I was doing and he went ahead and he had a big screen TV and he put me up on the he brought put up one of my videos on the screen in his shop and uh, anyway and he followed up with me after I posted the video to say how happy he was and thanking me on Instagram so that was that was very very sweet and I love visiting these local fish shops and 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 uh, you know more than ever we really need to support these fish shop these local fish fish stores family owned businesses and even if they're local or even the ones you order from, you know, our, our uh, you know, the, the uh, uh, our folks in Dover, you know, uh, Super Cichlids, Lisa and her family, um, you know, James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack, uh, Cunningham with Cunningham Cichlids, Life Fish Direct. I mean, all these folks, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, they all need our support right now. So any anything you can do along those lines is great. So, um uh, and the last one that I released, which was the most popular of the of the trio, was the Desperate Measures, and uh, the Desperate Measures video, which which led me to the topic of today's video. And uh, you know, I was in a in a in a situation where I had to um, take some action, and maybe this has happened to you, where you had to make a decision on uh, saving a fish, 
and it, and you knew that if you didn't take action, that fish would probably probably be dead, uh, you know, be killed. Sometimes when you take the action, it's already too late. There's been so much internal damage, so much uh, fin damage, uh, exposure to infection, things of this nature, that even when you put them in quarantine, they die on you anyway. But um, I, I, uh, I decided to go ahead and move quickly. And, uh, and I went ahead and uh, moved a large number of fish. And I'm going to get more into that in a second here. Let's first talk a little bit about what's coming up. And uh, what's coming up currently, I have I have two videos, actually three videos that, that are going to be uh, that are going to be coming up, and uh, one of them is uh, has to do with with fish coloring up, and um, why why some fish because I get this I get this question a lot. People send me uh, you know questions on Facebook and on on Instagram, and uh, you know they, they they PM me. And uh, they asked me, hey, look, um, what's, uh, why, why, how come my fish doesn't color up? How come, I've had him a long time, he's still gray, and uh, it's becoming frustrating. What, what, what do you suggest? Any, any tips? So um, I, I have a video coming out called uh, Where's the Color? And uh, so watch for that. And I talk about that subject. And also, uh, I make a return trip to my local PetSmart, which is actually a, a great PetSmart as far as big box stores go. I know some of you out there um, are steadfast against. Uh, some of you feel that, that the big box stores have hurt the mom and pop shops. Uh, my viewpoint is the mom and pop shops have to be on their toes. They have to get into social media. In other words, they have some responsibility in where they end up in this in this marketplace, uh, like my friend over at Nolan's Aquarium, I mean, he's on social media constantly, and I think that helps bring business in. So, uh, but and some of you would never buy a fish from a from a from a, a big box store like a Petco or a PetSmart. So um, I went in and I asked the person in the fish department some questions. I was happy to find out that um, they have started a quarantine procedure. In other words, the fish don't arrive and go right into the display tanks. And she told me that they've started a hospital tank procedure. Uh, how uh, how that is being carried out, uh, to what degree, I didn't actually go in the back and look, but, uh, but I was very happy to hear that. I also asked her questions about filtration, how they filter, uh, how many fil filter units do they have for the large, for the large bank? You know, they have a very large that that Petco that I went to or the PetSmart has a very large uh, wall of tanks, and so uh, at any rate, look for those two videos, and I'm probably going to be putting out a video uh, out on uh, on some myths and fallacies that exist in fish keeping, and I'm probably going to be tearing apart the one inch per gallon rule and a couple other things that float around that have really that really hurt more than help so that'll be another video that I that I'm sort of rolling around in my mind if you if you know some myths if you know some information that's being passed around right now in the fish keeping community and you know that that information is false and could actually harm fish and do more harm than good Share it in the comments because I'm going to pull some ideas. And I did this a while back. I did a myths that kill fish video. I'm going to do a, it's more or less like a follow up to that, uh, you know, myths that kill our fish. And uh, and the one inch per gallon rule will definitely be in there and uh, and a few other ones as well. So definitely uh, let me know. <clears throat> and uh, terrible princess, you know, um, it really depends on the man. I have found that the management of the individual big, big box stores is what really determines what's going on. And I have found complete uh, disinterest and apathy in some stores where I've actually pointed out that some fish were in distress and was asking what was going to be done. And I got sort of a, eh, who knows, who cares? And when I mentioned uh, this is at another, at another pet smart that I went to and I asked them, 
well, all of your tanks are sharing the water because of the way you filter through one system. So that means that all of your fish are contaminated with what with this, this disease I'm seeing. Uh, what do you guys what are you guys going to do about that? And, and, and she was just probably nothing. And then literally turned away from me to talk to another employee. I mean, it was a very uh, discouraging conversation, but it hasn't been like that at the PetSmart uh, that's closer to me. And so it really makes a difference on the management. You know, the management, uh, that, that really is what makes a difference at least from my experience. So watch for those videos. They are coming up. And uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's talk a little bit about today's, uh, today's topic. Uh, even though I had, uh, even though things had seemed to calm down and I even put out a video uh, entitled the war is uh, is the war over I think something like that I mean I'm sure candy probably already has it posted she's she's so damn fast uh, <laughs> unbelievably fast but the uh, something about how the, is the war over and uh, the uh, and, and in that video in that video I talked about how things had had, had looked like they'd gotten better and uh, whatever switch had turned on in the head of the trout back there in, in the in the in the head of that trout, it had, that switch had flipped, and he was now being more peaceful. Well, the two nights later, I'm sitting in a recliner, which is directly right here. It's where I sit and I watch my tank. It's where I unwind. So I was sitting in that recliner, and I noticed that the uh, that the trout was still keeping the fusco pretty much in the corner in this in this back corner back in here and so i um and i took a good look at that fusco and i could see that there were scales that were missing and um, you know when you start to to open up the sides of a fish uh, you know removing scales and things like that i mean you really you really predispose the fish so it's it's of course the stress of being harassed and uh, and and the the loss of the scales, the opening up of of the skin, you know, the opening up of the fish, makes you know destroys the fish's first line of defense for disease. So I knew that that that, that fusco was either going to have some disease occur, something was going to happen, or he was just going to be killed altogether. So I decided, okay, I got, I have to do something. So for quite some time, I had had my eye on uh, several of the fish in the one hundred, and I was contemplating where there was time to bring them over. Now, even though they look large in the 100, you know, it's all relative, right? They looked like a good size in the 100. You put them in here and and they, they look they look like fry. I mean, <clears throat> so we can compare one of them. This is the, uh, you can compare those two. But th these, these fish, like, like this deep water, he looked pretty large, pretty large in the 100, and and here he's like he's like a baby compared to these other guys. The hawk, this hawk here that's gonna follow my finger. He was a pretty good size in the 100, and here he's he's uh, he's a runt. Fortunately, nobody's I think so small that they'll fit in anybody's mouth, even though some of these fish can really really open it up. But not like the way like a Fusco can open it up, right? So uh, a couple of these fish had been put in here before and had to be taken out because they were they were heavily harassed. The deep water was taken out once. Uh, the um, I had to take out the uh, red empress, the super red empress, because uh, you know he was harassed very heavily. So several of these fish. We're in and already taken out the the uh, you'll see the when the when the dragon blood comes around you'll see the dragon blood too maybe I can coax him over here come on come on anyway the dragon blood had been taken out also because he he was harassed so some of these fish were being returned to this tank and so it was it was one of those it was basically a hail mary a hail mary you know I was just like crossing my fingers and putting them in and hoping that I would create so much 
activity and motion that um, the trout would be uh, distracted. And uh, so far, so far it looks like he has been. There he is. Maybe I can coax him over here. He's just a complete beast. Look at this guy. Oh, maybe 10 inches. Anyway, so he seems a little bit confused, a little bit distracted. The Fusco is still recovering, but is swimming around. And uh, I did see him get chased once or twice, but that's, that's pretty normal. You're going to see chases, uh, but I'm not seeing that kind of punishing kind of uh, activity, which is what had me so uh, concerned before. So, um, so the options you have really, uh, as I mentioned in the, uh, in the Desperate Measures video, you have really, th you, you have three options. And actually the, the truth is you have, you have four options. You have one, remove the aggressor. Uh, two, remove the, the one that's being beaten up. And uh, three, introduce a distraction. Uh, you can do that by pulling out decor you can, and rearranging decor. You can do it by introducing a lot of fish. So there's other ways of you know, introducing a distraction. In my case, I did it with adding a lot of fish. And that fourth option is you can get out of African cichlids because uh, <laughs> there's, there's, always, there's always something with the African cichlids, it seems like, anyway. But uh, that's uh, getting out of the African cichlids is not an option for me at this moment. But uh, so all in all, I think it, I think it's going well. The uh, Fusco is just chilling over in the corner. He'll, he'll probably be out a little bit. If, if, they, if he thought I was feeding, he'd be right out. Um, the Red Empress is not being harassed. The, um, the Long Nose... The long nose has fit in perfectly. The trout has, uh, not the trout rather, but the sand diver. The sand diver fit right in, just immediately just started behaving normally. And, and uh, so I would say overall, I think I've got it. I think, I, I think we're on the right track. But for anyone that has cichlids, you know, you just, got, you just have to be alert all the time. You, you never know when, when, again, when that switch is going to flip. The, uh, the Venusus continues to be the boss and very, very calm. And the, um, the eye biter has really chilled out since he was knocked into the third position or into the, into the, uh, yeah, into the third position. And, uh, so he, so the eye biter has really stopped being a jerk. Now, right after a water change, like I did a water change yesterday, there was, there was some, you know, a little bit of aggression, but that seems to be normal. Every time I do a water change, they, they get a little bit fired up. Uh, people have told me it, it be, it's because it, it, it triggers something, like, like a breeding or some kind of a something in them when you do a water change. So um, that's the update. And so as of right now, I would say it worked. Adding all these, all, adding all the fish worked. And... Um, But stay tuned, because <laughs> so let's take a look at your some of your comments here. Let's see what you have to say. And uh, Sean, I've had two dragon bloods. One was insanely aggressive, and had had to rehome it. The other was the tank's punching bag. Even otherwise peaceful fish would would blast him no more dragon bloods for me the uh <laughs> the yeah dragon i think dragon bloods in, in my mind to some degree are are a little bit like ob's uh you know, they've, they've been uh they're hybrids and um i think hybrids traditionally seem to be a little bit more aggressive that uh that ob that is really blossoming beautifully in, in my 100 uh is relatively peaceful uh, he's becoming bulky. Let's see what happens. I mean, these fish change when they put on size, just like the trout changed when he, when he got bigger. So let's see how he does as he gets bigger. But OBs, dragon bloods, 
Um, you know, you, you get your, your hybrid eye biters, uh, you know, which is sort of like a, a demon spawn in my mind. <laughs> an, eye, an OB eye biter, uh, beautiful fish, but I think it's uh, you're, you're uh, really kind of playing with fire. So, uh, but this guy, he was originally, see if I can coax him out here. Come on out. He's right back here. I don't know if you can see him on the camera. He's being really shy. Anyway, you can't see him now with the chat anyway. What am I saying? So, the... Um, this eye biter was aggressive originally and has really kind of mellowed out over time. And I think that's a good thing. Let's see what else is happening on the chat here. Uh, terrible princess. Yeah, because, you know, they, they think when you're in front of the tank, they think you're uh, going to feed them. And so they, they try and make, this is my theory, they try and make space. They try and create space so that they have the first shot at the food. And if you notice, just in general, like in nature, uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, the, in the lion pride, you know, the, the, the head lion eats first. And uh, so, so they, they have a pecking order on, on how they eat. And so, yes, there, there is a, they do act up more when I'm in front of the tank. And yes, they are addictive. And uh, they probably are hard to give up. They're sort of like a crack. I have a video called, I think it was cichlids or crack. And it talks about how, uh, how frustrating and how expensive and how much work and how much. And you keep going back. You keep going back, you know. And if I had a fish store, you know what I would do? I'd, I'd be like that, like that dealer on the corner. You know, your first cichlid is free. You know? <laughs> and then I got you hooked, you know. You have to keep coming back. So, um, and uh, Misael Santos, and uh, no, no, uh, well, no, questions are not off topic. It's a fish related question. You're on topic, my friend. And um, yeah, your crushed coral should help. Uh, you're going to be adding some, some uh, you know, calcium, some magnesium. You're going to make the water a little harder. That should give you a, a more uh, stable pH. Those minerals are going to buffer the acid uh, that is created, right? Uh, nit nitrates is nitric acid, uh, and that is going to lower your pH. So with that coral that you're going to be putting in there, that should help. Uh, you can also do it with um, ho uh, holy rock, limestone, uh, aragonite, right? There are other things you can do, and that will release... Uh, minerals and help in that area so uh, let me know come back to another live stream and let me know if after you add the crushed coral now it can take a little while keep in mind it's slowly reducing minerals and uh, but I think you're doing the right thing because it'll be a slow and gradual change as opposed to using uh, uh, you know pH up and products that that um, you constantly have to monitor and how much do I add and how much do I add after a 20% water change versus a 40% water change. And I don't, I don't like uh, water additives for pH control. I think your fish will adapt better if you use things like crushed coral and have it occur gradually over time. So uh, that's my two cents on that. Everything I say is my opinion. Make up your own mind, of course, and do your own research always. But uh, that's been my experience. Ambi, the truth, uh, using the fish in cycling. I don't agree with buying cheap fish to cycle your tank knowing they will die. Um, I've never cycled a tank that way, at least not intentionally. <laughs> I, uh, I have had, uh, I think I lost one fish way back when, when I was cycling. I wasn't, uh, I didn't have him as a sacrificial fish. It just happened that way. I've heard that uh, there are certain fish that are uh, extremely hardy like uh, black skirt tetras, black skirt tetras. You know, you can buy like six of them and put them in there. And then um, as the tank cycles, you can then add other fish, then pull the black skirts out, take them back to the fish store, and, and usually they'll, they'll just take them back. And, uh, and, and they're good for that kind of thing. But I wouldn't buy a fish uh, to put them in to die. 
Unless, of course, he was a feeder fish, right? Uh, thank you, Remco. Remco, thank you, my friend, for that super chat. Every little bit helps, and uh, you're partly responsible for why you're getting a nice, crispy live stream. <laughs> I have three lights going, a mirrorless camera on a tripod with a relatively expensive PC and a micro. Anyway, all that was you, all your super chats are used to upgrade the equipment. So thank you so much, my friend. So um, let's see here who else we got going. Any questions, please go ahead and ask them now. Robert Johnson, I have a heavy stock now, but I think I actually caused aggression. Only been a week, though, so that could change. Well, the one thing I can assure you, Robert Johnson, is that, yes, it will change. Um, it, it's, uh, and, and I say this, it's sort of a pun, but it, it's, it's true. It's a fluid situation, okay? Uh, fish are putting on size. Fish are uh, asserting themselves. Fish are being uh, triggered by other fish that all of a sudden color up and, and they consider a threat. Uh, it's a constant dynamic change. So maybe it will change. Also look to see if you have fish that are too similar. Uh, if they're very much like each other, that can trigger aggression. Do you have females in the tank? Uh, that can trigger aggression, competition for the females. Uh, so there's a variety of factors. Try reducing your temperature to the mid-70s. These fish do fine at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is uh, centigrade. But uh, 75, uh, you might try moving the decor around. You might try leaving the lights out for long stretches of time. Like have your lights on in the morning for a feeding for a few hours, then turn them off. Then turn them on in the evening, maybe from 6 to 8, feed them again, then turn the lights off and see if that calms things down. Uh, those kind of things can sometimes help. And uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you remember from my video, after I added all the fish to this tank, I turned the lights off and, uh, and, and left them off for a very long time. And that helped. It kind of helped everybody to settle in. I'm going back in the chat a little bit here. So Texas fish room, low stock, lots of plants. Now, see, now you're getting into the idea of, um, of being out of sight, you know, being, uh, having, be, being out of the line of sight where fish have a place where they can chill and hide, which is what the Fusco was doing in the corner with the artificial plants. And uh, so, yeah. Things that break the line of sight are, are good plants. If I could keep live plants on this tank, I would. They get destroyed by cichlids. And, um, but yeah, that's a, uh, that's a good thing. The, other, the, the downside on uh, things for cichlids to hide behind is that sometimes they can claim it as a territory. I, I once had an otter point that used to circulate around a rock and that rock was his. And it didn't matter how big the fish was. If you came near that rock, he would go after you. And so uh, the downside of decor for breaking line of sight is, uh, is that it can get claimed. And so uh, I currently still have decor in here, as you can see. And uh, the struggle is real. So, <laughs> all right, so. I'm going to catch up and go to the more current uh, comments. I'm laughing at the uh, spell check comment that somebody made. <laughs> I haven't seen any Maduka white lips in your tanks. Uh, I have a beautiful Maduka white lips in the uh, 100 gallon. Check out one of the uh, videos where I feature the 100 gallon. That's the tank that has the black, and, and this is um, in response to Long Lee. Uh, check out uh, any video where you see the black background and the black substrate, and I have a very nice, uh, big, hardy, uh, what I consider beautiful Maduka white lips in there. I picked them up from Paul. 
the inventory king up in the northwest. He was breeding them and uh, was kind enough to sell me one. So uh, check out one of those videos. And uh, yeah, I love Maduka White Lips. And I've heard also that uh, some people have said that they do good in groups. I think a group of Maduka White Lips would be beautiful. You, know, you see all those white lips kind of going around and I think it'd be uh, very, very pretty. So, uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Discus Chan just changed from African cichlids to discus. I have 17 of them in a 150. That must be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love discus. Absolutely gorgeous fish. And I definitely have my, uh, my mind made up that I will be setting up a discus tank uh, when we relo relocate in, uh, in Nashville, which looks like it's moving towards the, um, towards the fall. It looks like when we're going to be going, uh, for some of you who are baseball fans, for those of you who are outside the United States, uh, baseball is a very popular sport here, uh, like your soccer. And um, so the uh, one of my sons who was going to be involved in the Nashville uh, home purchase uh, works for a team called the Phillies, and he was called suddenly called back uh, to uh, go back to Philadelphia. So uh, we've put things a little bit a little bit on hold for a minute. But in, uh, in August, we're going down to Nashville to uh, look at houses, and we'll go from there. And so I will definitely be getting a, uh, setting up a discus tank when we get down there. Love those fish. <laughs> Cat Sailor uh, <laughs> had a bully, a small bully, was going after a smaller tank mate. Relentlessly, I trapped him with a large plastic kitchen strainer against the glass, and we stared at each other <laughs> for fun. <laughs> Did it work? Did it calm him down? Oh, my God. After that, he backed off. Okay, good. Good. Looks like you just needed a little little tune-up there just to be shown who's boss. <laughs> All right. Robert Johnson, I would want to get... Uh, I want to get something like a 150 tall. As much as I hate having to reach way down to service the bottom of a tank, uh, I think discus look look best in a in a in a tall, uh, you know, tall tank that uh, you know that's maybe more narrow front to back but taller. So something like a 150 tall, uh, 180 tall, you know, something along those lines. I want them to get big. You know, I've seen them the size of uh, dinner plates. I mean, it's just amazing. Of course, that means a lot of clean water, a lot of good food, uh, you know, pristine water conditions, relentless maintenance. Let's see here. Terrible Princess is also leaving California, Texas bound. Yeah, yeah. A lot of a bit of a California exodus going on right now. It's very hard to rent moving trucks. So many people are leaving uh, to rent a moving truck out is like sixteen hundred dollars. To bring one to move to California is like four hundred dollars. So that tells you a little bit about what direction the action is in. Uh, let's see here. It looks like uh, Francia Arroyo also used the trap and stare down method. You know, some people use the timeout, and I've never found that the timeout works. Uh, you know, you, you, you put that aggressive fish in a tank, and, and when you put them back, it's, it's just a, it seems like just a matter of time, even if you rearrange the tank before they just sort of pick up where they left off. And uh, sometimes if you take the fish that was being beat up out of the tank and, give, and let him recover and uh, let his fins heal and get his strength back, and then put them back in. Sometimes that that might work, but uh, let's see here. I 
Let's take a look here at some more of your comments. And by the way, keep in mind that um, that whenever you, you do anything, whenever you remove an aggressor, other fish are going to try and move up in, in, in that pecking order. When you remove uh, the one that was being beat up, that fish may now find another target. So whenever you, you, you put fish in or out, there's going to be a shuffling. There's going to be a, a, a change in the, in, in the pecking order. And so that, that, that can make, uh, just keep that in mind because it, it, you can feel sometimes like you're playing uh, whack, whack-a-mole yeah, the, for those of you not familiar with, that's a game where you're you're whacking a mole that comes out, and then another one comes out, and you whack that one, and then you, you feel like you're playing whack a mole because the, uh, uh, it, the it's a dynamic again using that phrase. It's a fluid situation, and when you remove one fish, another fish gets on the radar of the antagonistic fish, or you remove the aggressor, and another fish tries to make their move into the first spot, and now you have a new set of dynamic situations going on. Javier, Javier comes in strong with 1999. Thank you, Javier. Very appreciated. One of my favorite tanks of all time was when I had a rather large group of red and yellow Marlboro discus. You might want to try that look. Incredible. Also, have you ever kept Mayan cichlids? Never kept Mayan cichlids. And your idea of the uh, discus, that sounds beautiful. That sounds really pretty. Um, was the background was the background all black or was it a light blue? I, I'm wondering what kind of a background. I imagine I imagine uh, the yellow and the red marlboros against against a black background, like let's say black and a black substrate. I think that would be gorgeous. It would seem to me it would be, but uh, definitely something I'll consider. Even though there's so many beautiful discus, I mean the snakeskins, uh, you know your your uh, you know your your melons, your I mean the, there's so many beautiful uh, the pigeon bloods, there's so many beautiful colors to pick from. It, it's it, it would be hard it would be really hard for me to just have a couple colors, but I could see how the simplicity of it would be absolutely stunning. You may have just uh, talked me into having several discus tanks. <laughs> So thank you for that super chat, Javier. Very appreciated. And let's see here. Yeah, Sean, same thing for me. I mean, the timeouts don't work. I don't think they work. Akuna Matata, people moving out of Manhattan. I heard that the crime situation in Manhattan has become excessive, and I don't want to get into too much of that uh, not being fish-related, but yeah, yeah. The agent in uh, Nashville that we're using uh, said that houses are coming on the market and they're gone within five or six days. So she said that a week before we come out, she'll put together the list because there's no point in putting it together now because all those houses will be gone probably within a week. And the buyers are coming from Chicago, New York, California, and Washington, Oregon. And uh, so anyway, you see the pattern. Um, Remco. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it was when I put the, the fish in this one. I mean, it was. It was like, it was like, there, it, it was like, the recess bell somebody you know rang the recess bell it was it was like uh, confusion and and who are you and should I chase you or should I chase you or uh, it was like it was like a, a big confusion and I thought it was it was uh, and then I turned the lights off and uh, I, I let them chill for about you know eight hours and then I turned the lights on to check on them and, and it looked okay Cat Sailor, shouldn't we have an interview segment with Candy and what she is doing with fish, tank management, etc.? Well, Candy, would you like that? Do you want to do an interview? I've got to figure out how to get two people on to an OBS live stream. I use what's called Open Broadcast. Uh, it's a live stream software. 
I'd have to figure out how to get two people on it. I don't want to put you on the spot, Candy. You don't have to answer that if you don't want to. So in the 150, Robert Johnson, I think um, we're probably right around 18 fish total in in this in this tank here. If that's what you're asking, I think there's a, probably around 18 right now, and uh, varying in size from uh, like the little living stone eye, three to four inches to like the big beast back there, the Venusas and the trout are over 10 inches. So there's a wide range. And uh, to you, what job do you do? Um, to you, I am uh, currently semi-retired, but I, I, um, I was a consultant for 32 years for uh, businesses like dental offices and uh, professional accounting offices, optometrists, uh, things like that. I worked in the consulting industry for 32 years with the same company, six years with the same software company before that. So I'm kind of a, once I dig into a job, I sort of stick to it. Now I still help out with the consulting company but I'm in a sort of you know webinars, things like that. I also have done a lot of public uh, speaking. I used to do introductory lectures for that company. So uh, that's what I do. My favorite cichlid in the 150, uh, Comply 5. Um, Wow, I think I just saw the, uh, the Borlei quad actually act a little aggressive. Borlei quad hardly ever even comes out. Anyway, the, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I think, I think this, this fire hap from Live Fish Direct is spectacular. Uh, the, the, uh, the eye biter is crazy, a crazy great fish, the, the trout. Uh, Vinny, the tank boss, I think is an amazing fish. I really can't pick one. I really can't pick one. I really, if I, if someone said, okay, look, you know, you've got to give them all away, but you can keep one. I don't know which one I would keep. The, um, and then I have some that I think are gonna become spectacular, like that, that sand diver. That sand diver is going to become a spectacular and crazy colored fish. The uh, the the uh, long nose is going to become a, a the hawk will be spectacular at some point. You know, so it, it's it's hard to say. It's really hard to say, and I I really wouldn't wouldn't want to pick one. Let's see here. I'm looking at your comments again. Sean, what do you what do you have against the fire hat? <laughs> Why don't you like my fire? <laughs> That's funny. Don't say the fire. <laughs> oh boy. Candy, I did one live stream with KG Tropicals. That will be my only one. There you go. Candy has spoken. There's no pressure. And, uh, but Candy, you know, we're interested in you because you're, you're such a competent individual. All right, let's see here. Robert Johnson likes the Red Empress. Yeah, this Super Red Empress is beautiful and right out of the bag, come on, had color and has never colored down even under the worst harassment. Now, if you folks follow my channel, you know that I moved that Empress out of here to the 100, to the 100, and he was tattered. He was pretty beaten up. He was getting beaten up by the fire hap and also by the uh, Borlei quad. And uh, he's 
The fire hat has completely recovered and looks spectacular right here. Just a beautiful fish from Live Fish Direct. Let's see here. Comply. I love the sand diver. Yeah, though the sand diver, I tell you, when that fish colors up, because at a small size, he was already showing that that metallic color around the head and stuff. Now, I'll tell you something. When I when I put the when I moved the fish here, all the fish lightened up. And it wasn't, I don't think it was entirely because they were intimidated. They when they were moved here. Uh, on a white substrate, it changed their color. Now, you've heard this tossed around the fish community, and, and I, I know from first-hand experience it's true. Um, it's true for me, and I would love to hear what you have to say about it, but the substrate changes the color of these fish. They all became a bit lighter, a bit lighter, a bit more uh, translucent, if you will, in, in their colors, and so... Uh, even this super red empress. All right. Danny Ken Aquatics, I love everything in that tank. Thank you. So, you know, honestly, so do I. The rainbow-looking one, uh, terrible princess, is probably what uh, is probably the fire hap. That's if I can get him over here. This big boy right there. That is a fire hap. He is a, a cousin to uh, the Taiwan Reef, and the um, and he's he's he needs vegetables. In his, he's a protomelus. He's a, you know he's a hap. And he's he's a predator, but he also likes vegetables. So you got to include some veggies in the diet, and uh, but again, right out of the bag from Life Fish Direct, uh, you know, when I first got that order, I thought there's no way, there's no way that Life Fish Direct is juicing their fish. In other words, adding hormones to make the fish look colored up so that people buy them, and then when the hormones wear off, I mean, sometimes you you have a, a female, you know. So um, I knew that wasn't the case with, with Life Fish Direct. They're legit. They're a legit organization. And right out of the bag, so many of these fish were like spectacular. And uh, the other fish I got from him is the Imperial, the Tangerine Tiger, the, the Imperial back there. And he's starting to show some of the gold in the body. That is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really looking forward to him as well. And uh, this guy is from Trevor O'Shea. The trout is from Trevor O'Shea. The Wonder of Cichlids, another legit, legit organization. All right. So um, with that, I think we will go ahead and uh, thank my wonderful moderators. And uh, also thank you to those of you who did the Super Chats today. Like I said, every penny helps. Uh, watch for my videos that are coming up. Where's the color? And my trip to uh, PetSmart. My five tips for going to a big box store. There's five tips everybody should should uh, adhere to whenever they go to a big box store. And uh, so be sure to watch that that video coming up probably on uh, maybe on Tuesday. I don't know which one. One of them will be Sunday. One of them will be Tuesday. And uh, don't forget to uh, visit the store if you want to get uh, some of the uh, swag, right? The uh, the hoodies and T-shirts with the uh, emblem. And uh, come on by the Facebook channel if you'd like to join the Facebook group. And a good group of people there. Be sure to answer all the questions so the admins let you in. That's how we keep the trolls out. And uh, I have an Amazon store. If you use my Amazon link to get to Amazon and you buy something from Amazon that isn't in my store, the channel still gets a credit and it doesn't raise your price on your products. So it's a great way to support the channel. And uh, otherwise, thank you everybody for tuning in. You are appreciated. Thank you, uh, moderators. You're wonderful. Thank you all of you. And I hope to see you next week at Cichlids and Coffee. Bye-bye.